Good afternoon. My name is John Vall, and I'm here at the center, and I have the pleasure of being the chair of this afternoon's session on Muslim Americans debating the notion of American and un-American, which is the title of a book that we will be discussing. Before we start, however, I would want to remind everybody in the room that there is machinery there. And that isn't just for decoration in the room. We are recording the session. And uh, it is a requirement, or it should be a requirement, for sessions like this that everybody in the room know that we are recording so that what you happen to say, if you decide to say something, uh, is will be recorded as well as what the speaker has to say. <coughs> it's a real pleasure to be the chair of this session. Uh, one of the interests of the Center for Muslim Christian Understanding is to try and understand how contemporary globally pluralist societies operate in the 21st century. And having somebody originally from Bangladesh who has a doctorate degree from Australia, uh, who has been in European and American uh, educational institutions, uh, is probably one of the best starting points for really trying to think about how we get pluralist societies. I first became familiar with Dr. Uh, Nahed's work uh, at a conference uh, in New Zealand when I was asked to talk about the Sharia in the Pacific. Now most people think of uh, Sharia in the Pacific as something that they'd never thought of before. Uh, but we already, I already had a book in my hands of someone who was talking about Muslims in Australia. Uh, and so that I, I don't want to talk too much because I want to hear what Dr. Nahad will be saying and I want you to hear what she has to say. But we have then a very distinguished person at the center this year uh, who uh, her formal title is adjunct professor and visiting researcher uh, here at the center. Uh, and she has been teaching courses as well as doing research. And it is our pleasure to have her here and our pleasure to listen to you this afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes. Is it working? Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your presence, and um, uh, thank you, Professor Wall, for your uh, uh, generous introduction. And I'm very honored that uh, my book has been endorsed uh, by uh, uh, Professor John Wall uh, of this center and Professor Yvonne Haddad. And I'm so happy, uh, and I feel uh, I'm very honored for that. Uh, the title of my book, as uh, Professor John Wall um, said, that uh, um, it's uh, Muslim Americans debating the notion of American un and un-American. So regarding a bit of background of my uh, writing this uh, book, uh, it is uh, whenever there is a crisis that involves Muslims or Islam, there emerges the Muslim question, like, who are these people? What do they want? What does their Quran teach? Would they introduce the Sharia in the country? Would they ever integrate? Or would they blow us up? There are some academics, such as uh, Samuel Huntington and uh, Bernard Lewis. They have held pessimist views on Islam and Muslims. There have been uh, concerned, they are concerned, or they have uh, uh, spoken about uh, whether Islam is uh, compatible with democracy. But then again, there are academics and scholars such as uh, Professor John Wall, John Esposito, Yvonne Haddad, they have addressed the misconceptions about uh, Islam and Muslims. So against this backdrop, 
uh, I thought um, I would um, write this book. This book has, uh, as you can see, six chapters. Introduction, uh, the Muslim question continues, where I have uh, uh, discussed the rationale of this uh, book and uh, the research methodology. The second chapter is brings the main research question of this book, what does it mean to be American and un-American? Chapter three is titled Culture Matters. Chapter four is The Media Un-American. Chapter five, Modern Day Macartism. Chapter six, Conclusion, Comprehending the Present and Looking into the Future. So in chapter uh, one, in the introduction, uh, I have uh, Men, I have uh, discussed my research methodology. As you can see, it is um, a grounded uh, a theory method, which is uh, a qualitative research based on 379 tape-recorded in-depth interviews uh, of young Muslims 15 years and over in, in six states, Massachusetts, New York, Florida, Virginia, Maryland, and Michigan. And I conducted this research when I was a visiting fellow at Harvard University. Later in 2014, I uh, conducted some interviews, but it, the method was not uh, taking methods. Uh, it was from um, New York and New Jersey. It was more based on uh, the Muslim um, uh, mosque construction issues uh, or the Muslim uh, facing uh, certain social issues uh, in the society. The second research methodology was content analysis through critical discourse analysis of the print media. As you can see the print uh, uh, media's name. So in my work, I have uh, analyzed the mo most of the interviews of the 379 participants. And uh, again, uh, I have done uh, some research on print media to see their uh, representation of Islam and uh, Muslims. And uh, the uh, third uh, final method is the visual sociology method, uh, and it is uh, about uh, incorporating some images uh, into, the, into the theme of the book and into the um, arguments because uh, visual sociology or the images can have lasting impact. A reader can it, become, it can become very monotonous for a reader just to read. So sometimes I, I find some uh, images can uh, bring some um, effect uh, on, on the reader's mind. It can um, associate with the arguments that I'm trying to uh, present. So in chapter two, I have analyzed the interviews of 379 participants, the age range 15 years and over, as you can see. So they have defined their notion of American and un-American. So out of 379 participants, 86 said American was freedom, democracy, constitution, leadership, equal rights, civil liberties, bill of rights, first 10 amendments. 68 said American culture, individualism, modernization, westernization, being extrovert, upfront, food, American pie, burger, steak, hot dog, sports, snowboarding, hiking, Thanksgiving, poor education, family issues, and high divorce rates as American. <laughs> 52 participants uh, said uh, that identity and citizenship, ID cards, passport, that's what, or born in the USA, makes them an American. 47 participants spoke of diversity, melting pot, integration, coexistence, and tolerance, uh, tolerance are uh, American qualities. 31 spoke about loyalty to America, patriotism, pledge of allegiance uh, uh, would be American. 23 were a spectacle of the term American, and 11 participants said Islamophobia, racial profiling um, were American. Out of 79 participants on the topic of un-American, 123 participants said that un-American means opposite to anything that is American, no freedom, undemocratic, monoculture, no diversity, no education, no English skills, and not US born. 78 
participants spoke about cultures, Bengali, Indian, or any foreign cultures. Uh, 58 said racism and uh, racial profiling um, is um, un-American. Disloyalty, 53 uh, participants says disloyalty is uh, un-American. Again, um, 11 were skeptical of the term, and uh, 10 participants were highly critical of U.S. foreign policy, and they considered is it as un-American. So um, as I was writing my second chapter, uh, I cited this uh, interview of a participant who is U.S. born and identified himself as African American. So with his uh, interview, I have uh, associated this uh, um, uh, cartoon of Khalil Bandib, which shows uh, the Native Americans are the original uh, people of America and how different groups have come <coughs> in different times and how different groups have been leveled. So this participant says, literally, my entire history is based on being oppressed. Either if you do consider me African American, if you do consider me Native American, because I have Native American in me. So I wouldn't consider myself American in that sense. I think the term un-American is pretty much is determined by the majority and not by the minority. For example, if everybody thinks Muslims are terrorists, then you are officially un-American. To be un-American pretty much means when you step out of the line. You know when you are that person that when the spotlight is on, cause you look at American society, there's always been a spotlight on somebody. You know at some point, the South during the Civil War, the South was un-American and the North was the American side. You know the Vietnamese were un-American at one point, so they were in internment camps. You know the Japanese were in internment camps and things like that while they were in America. So they were the un-American bunch. Black have been un-American for the longest time. If they stay in line though, it's okay, you are American. If you know, if you are a slave, that's okay. But once you step out of line, then the hounds get sick on you, the dogs, so it's like the fire hydrant and things like that. Now you are not part of us. So my, the participant uh, really uh, set the scene of my entire book with his, uh, um, with his um, uh, yeah, views uh, on American and, and un-American. But however, uh, what was interesting in my work is that the participants were from six different states, but sometimes they had similar voices and similar themes uh, when they discussed uh, on the topic of uh, American and un-American, though they were so much culturally diverse uh, group of people. So some, some participants, as Levin only said, that uh, racial profiling is uh, American while 58 participants say it's, it's un-American. So this uh, image by Khalil Bandib, uh, it shows that uh, um, in 2010, the anti-immigration law was passed in Arizona, uh, and that can, um, it was um, actually directed against the Latino group of people, but uh, the Muslim leaders uh, expressed this concern that the Muslims would be also affected in racial profiling uh, because of their visibility as the cartoon shows. Uh, um, then again, there has been uh, some um, discussion or some uh, views of uh, how they, they or their parents, the participants or their parents have been racially profiled at the airport. There have been um, voices which says that Pledge of Allegiance is American. So this girl who in, uh, identified herself as Puerto Rican Muslim, she said, Oh, to be American, the way I was raised here, to be American is to stand up when you hear the national anthem, to respect the president no matter what, not talk about the president. You can dis disagree, but not wish ill things towards the president. That's the way I was raised in America. Another girl, a uh, Muslim who identified herself as Muslim Indian American, she said, when I was in public school, I was considered American to be patriotic and support your country whenever they had the Pledge of Allegiance. 
So sometimes uh, uh, people would uh, uh, define American or an American um, with the experience they had in their life or th with, through their observation. Uh, I met this um, young man in uh, Florida who uh, uh, is of Egyptian background and who identified himself as Egy Egy Egyptian American Muslim. And uh, he was very distressed. It was in 2010 when I conducted the interview. He was distressed because his former um, school principal, Dr. Sami al Aryan, and who was also the uh, professor of um, University of South uh, um, Florida, um, he was um, arrested, uh, I think, in 2009, uh, 2003, for the um, on charges of terrorism. And uh, later, um, he was. Um, the federal court dropped, uh, he was uh, in confinement uh, for many years, and later the federal court dropped, dropped charges against him, and he was deported. So th this young man was very distressed, and he defined to him American was distrust, and un-American was trust. Then again, there was a, a participant um, in New York uh, who uh, thought America is a very nice place to live, and he compared American and un-American with the Islamophobia in what's happening in Europe. So he told me, look, what's happening in uh, Europe, it was back then in 2010. Um, in France, you see there's the niqab restrictions. In uh, Belgium, no burqa. In De Denmark, there is uh, um, uh, the Danish cartoon uh, controversy. And in Switzerland, the mosques are not allowed to build minaret. So if you compare European Islamophobia, I think we are far better off in, this, in, in America. <coughs> the culture uh, chapter has been pretty extensive, pretty um, big, uh, and the, cha and the um, uh, it was our, on uh, the cultural aspect of the participant, where the participants, many participants okay. said that uh, of diverse background, they considered their parents were un-American because they imposed their uh, cultural restrictions on them, and they are the second generation Americans, uh, and so that's why they um, are more, uh, they're more American and, and they fit in um, quite well uh, in the society. So in the uh, culture chapter, I have defined what Islamic culture is or ethnic culture is, and again within Islam, there is folk Islam that came up in the study. Um, that's a sort of ethnic practice of Islam and uh, the American culture. And again, the concept of enculturation, acculturation, um, the individualist and the uh, collectivist uh, family structures. And I have also discussed a lot of complexities um, uh, within in the cultural context. As you can see in this um, uh, image, uh, Muslims are a diverse group of people. Um, so this is a Bangladeshi new immigrant. Uh, they, it was the Eid, first Eid, Eid al-Fitr, and uh, they um, uh, went for prayers and came back. So just in the family, the mother is, uh, is wearing the, you know, is, has covered her hair, and there are two, three daughters and uh, son-in-law are there. Uh, so when they, you know, Muslims, when they offer prayer, of course, they, they have their um, uh, hair covered. Uh, so this shows, again, the diversity um, in the um, Muslim uh, community. So speaking of uh, the cultural tensions, uh, um, uh, and, and immigrants are, se are, have, are settling in a diasporic uh, um, uh, environment. So, so there is, that's why I think there's a tension between the first and second generation. This um, young man of 18 years old, Amjad of Jordanian background, overseas born, and his identity he described as Arab American. So he says, I think that they, the first generation, try to do the most is because they weren't raised here, they try to maintain their sense of culture that they held. They brought their sense of culture with them from there. But most of us, the second generation, we are all, of course, all raised here, so we have a stronger sense of national identity instilled in us. Another participant, 15 years old, of um, Bangladeshi background, she identified herself as American Bengali, and she equated the notions of independence and dependence with the term American and un-American. So she says, I think Americans are more rebellious, they're more independent, whereas non-Americans 
are or even Bengalis for the sake they are more dependent on others. Like my parents, they say, oh, when we are, we are old, will you take care of us? I mean, of course I will. But if this was American, they would become independent and like that. So it's just, again, the collectivist and individualist family uh, concepts comes in. Another girl of a Pakistani background, 15 years old, she said, as I said before, our main goal is dawah. Invite someone and explain what Islam is about in America. The term American and non-American or un-American are definitely very broad and must be dug into. Regarding the diversity, as I said, that um, there, there are cultural celeb uh, celebrations and cultural differences uh, in, uh, in the Muslim community, diverse Muslim community, but henna uh, girls uh, of different backgrounds, they tend to put it during Eid time, the Muslim celebration, or during special occasion, or uh, during um, wedding um, ceremonies. So yeah, about uh, the individualistic culture, uh, the uh, concepts that came in in the discussion of American and un-American is uh, uh, young people who are settling here, they feel a pressure to fit in. Again, the quality is being upfront to be American. Mind your own business, that's the word they use, one used, is, is a, the American way, like, not to interfere in other people's uh, business, and um, work and responsibility, so freedom, not family-oriented, so that's what they meant by um, American. And in my work, I normally um, uh, emphasize that biculturalism is a very important factor for young people to settle in this society. Biculturalism, uh, by uh, biculturalism I mean it is uh, uh, the young people should be well placed between uh, two cultures uh, through debate, um, through uh, music, uh, and um, uh, through sports, and that's, that can be a strength uh, in their adjusting in or balancing between the two cultures. The next chapter is the media un-American. Uh, I, uh, I will not uh, discuss much now in this, uh, uh, in this uh, session. It's more the young people where the participants were very distressed with the media because they thought that media was not, uh, uh, the media was not uh, uh, representing uh, Muslim or Islam um, in, in, the, in the right way. So, the, so they, for them, many of them, uh, the media representation of Islam and Muslim was uh, un-American. So, for example, this image, uh, which um, uh, is about uh, Jared Lee Loeffner uh, in Arizona in 2000 and January 2011, he uh, shot uh, Congresswoman, Democrat Congresswoman Gabrielle um, Gifford, and um, he killed with, with his um, um, uh, gun six people, including a nine-year-old um, child, and uh, 13 people uh, were injured. So the, um, again, the, as one participant said, well, the media is, uh, she didn't say un-American or American. She said that the media maintains a double standard. So as this cartoon shows that if Jared uh, Lee Loeffner was a Muslim, uh, what would ha uh, have happened, it, the media would have gone overboard and, uh, and would have the news uh, um, for a long time. Uh, but uh, since he's a non-Muslim, so it's a nut case. That's the media would say, yeah. Chapter uh, five, uh, which is uh, the McCarthyism. This is, uh, again, a very um, big uh, discussion on the topic in my book. And it's, uh, it's the incidents that's been happening in the contemporary American society, some of the incidents by certain sectors of the society, uh, that really sometimes uh, brings back the memory of Joe McCarthy in the 1950s where he singled out some Americans uh, um, as uh, thinking that they were communist sympathizers. Uh, so uh, so this, my, my research finds that, well, that's, that pattern has come back, but this time it's a religious group that has been singled out. Uh, so this um, uh, image shows the Republican, um, Representative of New York, Peter King, he um, held a session 
um, congress congressional session and where the uh, some Muslims were uh, singled out as the other. And his uh, uh, opinion or his statement was that Muslims were not doing enough to fight radicalism. So on the other hand, there were the Muslims who were, which included um, Senator Keith Ellison and other Muslim leaders. They said, we are fighting um, radicalization or radicalism in the society. We are, um, we are um, working with the law enforcement um, uh, people to address these issues, and we are equally victim of uh, radicalization. So uh, this sort of session, uh, which uh, um, can single out a particular community that's not helpful for the society. So the participants have in general discussed uh, what is American and un-American. Sometimes in the media context, they have given examples. Uh, but uh, apart from the participants' view in the, um, while examining the notion of American and un-American, so I did some media research, and again, I um, did some analysis on such topic to find out um, to what extent uh, um, these uh, sort of uh, stereotype has gone, uh, was done uh, during that period. During election time, as we, uh, most of us know that in 2016 election campaign, how some Republican candidate, uh, uh, they singled out the Muslim group um, as the other, as um, the threat, but this trend um, has been for some time in that pre during President Obama's uh, um, uh, time, it was like he was, uh, um, uh, he was sometimes perceived as a Muslim and he was harassed. In 2012, the, here you see the three Republican politicians, their anti-Muslim rhetoric. Uh, so in front is Rick Santorinium, uh, then Newt Greenwich, and then Mitt Romney. So this trend is still going on, as we, as we saw in the uh, 2016 election campaign. Um, but uh, it... Um, but it could be, uh, I think it is, um, that, that strategy of some politicians mm -hmm. is continuing. In December 2015, there was a, a shooting um, case, some would say ter terrorism, some would say gun violence, um, uh, by, um, as, it, as um, President Obama termed him as a lone shooter, these two couple from uh, San Bernardino, um, they um, had uh, they had a plot, a terrorist uh, uh, plot, and uh, um, so one of them shot a um, few people, uh, so many people. Say, for example, um, I think 14 um, where was 14 people were killed and 21 was wounded. At this, uh, President Obama stated, "What we know that the killers in San Bernardino used military style." assault weapons, weapons of war, to kill as many as they could. It's another tragic reminder that here in America, it's way too easy for dangerous people to get their hands on gun. So the debate should have been as the cartoon from, the cartoonist from Australia, uh, he had this uh, cartoon uh, in an Australian newspaper uh, because Australia, they have the gun reform. And uh, the title uh, is How Do We Obliterate? Uh, so as we can see in the cartoon, there is the NRA and the rifles and the um, flag uh, which shows uh, rallies and, and the debate that's going on about uh, gun reform uh, in America and perhaps who has the upper hand, uh, NRA or the um, gun uh, supporters. Uh, so um, the debate should have been, election and campaign should have been on gun reforms, but rather it was, again, on Muslims, uh, the uh, ca ca candidate, uh, uh, Republican candidate Donald Trump mentioned the word Muslim ban after this uh, uh, incident, and subsequently other um, Republican candidate had their uh, rhetoric on uh, anti-Muslim rhetoric, so it's uh, now m most participants um, would have thought, because my, I, have, I have done this research in 2009 to 2011, perhaps this sort of Islamophobia is un-American, because most of them said Islamophobia and racial profiling are un-American. So about the foreign policies, some participants considered 
U.S. foreign policies as un-American. Some participants thought the comments and actions of President Obama and President Bush and Obama were un-American. For example, Obama sending 30,000 troops to Afghanistan. A participant, he says, it's like if I said something against President Obama, right now I, I would be un-American. But if it is a white person who said it, it would just be like them being political. The drone attack, uh, I think uh, Ob in during Obama's time, he, has, he had the most drone attacks compared to, that's what the statistics says, uh, or the analyst says he had the most drone attack uh, compared to President Bush. But um, mm, here again, um, at uh, the time of uh, the Times Square bombing by Faisal Shehzad, a Pakistani origin uh, American, so uh, he uh, the, then the debate was um, like, for example, in the Time magazine there was a letter from um, a Pakistani writer who said, well, for the Americans one life is can be so important, but um, but the other life in other countries may not be as important. So the, the drone uh, in the foreign policies, um, uh, that sort of uh, issues came up in my, in my research. This painting shows uh, this young man. He is still optimistic of having a homeland in Palestine. So Palestine, Palestinians dream of a homeland. So the painting depicts that Palestine has been destroyed by Israeli forces. Palestinians still desire their homeland, and that's what the Palestinian, young Palestinian is optimistic, opt optimistically now holding the flag. So one of the participants in my study who is of Egyptian background, a human rights lawyer, he said, we see settlement every day in Palestine. Actually, this is our only problem. We don't need any, anything else from anyone. We can change our government. We will try to do it. We don't need Obama's help or the United States or United Kingdom. We don't need any help. We just need his help to hold the Israeli government as responsible for the violation of the international human rights law. So the participants, some say that, yeah, American, for, I think 10 participants say it's American foreign policy is un-American. Un but there are historians and analysts who would, um, who suggested um, or who observed that American foreign policy um, is American because America has always had uh, imperial interests uh, overseas uh, and that's why they have uh, engaged uh, in, in war. Uh, but again, my research found that during Bl Bill Clinton's time when Bosnia was ignored by other powers, Bill Clinton did uh, intervene in the Bosnian um, war and he did um, take, uh, supported the Bosnians uh, um, against the Serbians. So sometimes a general statement uh, like imperial interest or national interest sometimes may not work in the context of American foreign policy. So the conclusion is in my work I have uh, uh, I have summarized the entire um, uh, uh, chapters, and uh, I have also discussed the what's happening in the, in the Muslim world, the emergence of Daesh, ISIL, Islamic State, the issue of um, Shia-Sunni conflict uh, um, or tensions, which is uh, uh, my research has, uh, particularly my current research uh, is finding there are tensions in the, commu in the, in the community. And uh, again, there is uh, tensions um, uh, regionally and globally, and that, that's not helpful and that needs to be addressed. And with the positive side of the American society, well, the presence of us, the immigrants, the Muslims, I mean, 
people are still migrating no matter what the government's policies are or rhetorics are or the politicians uh, so so there is a acceptance of the of the minorities of different groups that's the positive side and um, there i sometimes see billboards um, uh, on the roads during ramadan or sometimes some statements on islam again that's uh, informing the people about uh, the presence of religious group uh, um, that's that's again a positive side and historically muhammad ali was muslim and that's uh, um, people knew the presence of muslims for a long time here the iconic figures uh, presence in the american society in um, florida i went um, uh, to see the project downtown of uh, the uh, Muslim students uh, uh, involvement in that project and uh, I found that in the weekends they go to the um, um, to go to downtown to feed the homeless people and not necessarily they were Muslims they were all um, no I found them all um, uh, non-Muslims uh, um, during the earthquake in Haiti uh, the I interviewed um, uh, some school students uh, and they said that uh, they raised funds for the Haiti uh, uh, victims, uh, so Haiti victims. So so, uh, so positive things are happening in uh, New York. Uh, the mayor has announced holidays for uh, Muslim um, students uh, in the schools. Uh, and uh, as this, uh, with my final uh, slide, as PowerPoint <laughs> slide, as this image shows that um, <coughs> during, uh, after the sighting of a uh, moon, after Ramadan, um, the Empire State Building, it lights up uh, it, um, the tower in green. So again, that's a recognition and uh, presence of the Muslim. So I, I conclude by saying that uh, American Muslims, uh, the uh, American Muslims together uh, with uh, the civil society and the government, they should work together to make America a more cohesive society. Thank you.